Well, it's Tuesday, and that means we're still talking about electrics for your model railroad. And this week, we're talking about selectively controlled uh, turnouts. So last week, we were talking about juicing the frog, how we would get power to the frog. And some people pointed out that they just don't power their frogs. They'll put a keep alive or some other electrical system in their locomotive so that it it can just cross through a dead area without stalling. So what we're talking about here uh, really applies to AC railroads and DC railroads. If you're using DCC and you're using keep alives uh, in your locomotives or of course if you're running from batteries then uh, none of this is all that relevant. And you probably wouldn't want to do selective control on a DCC railroad although I have and I'll explain that later. So last week we were talking about how to power the frog and how the polarity on the frog needs to change back and forth as the switch points move so that you have uh, contiguous power through the switch as your trains are moving through your switch. And we pointed out that you can do that by adding a single pole double throw uh, micro switch similar to this one somewhere in your linkage, your mechanism that's going to throw the points and use that as a switch to control the power to the frog. By single pole double throw, we mean a switch that uh, is able to route power from a central connection to either one side or the other depending on how you throw the switch or if you're using a commercially available uh, switch machine like the tortoise switch machine here then it has uh, built-in switches it has a bus here where you connect power to the switch machine but it also has two single pole double throw switches in other words a double pole double throw switch built right in or we mentioned if you're using dcc you can use a frog juicer similar to these and those will route power to your frog. As soon as your wheels touch the frog, it will automatically align the polarity of the frog to match your uh, locomotive. Now, any of these systems will work in creating a selective switch, uh, but we have to have some system for powering the frog, and then from there we can uh, create a selectively controlled turnout. So our goal in creating a selective turnout will be to power one or both of the frog rails from the frog juicer. When we're working with a commercially available switch like this one, that can be a bit of a challenge because there's usually a jumper to take power from the, uh, the stock rail over to the frog rail in order to take power to that track. But we need to somehow break that connection because what we want to do is electrically tie the frog rail to the frog juicing system, whatever that is. Now, if we're scratch building our switch, what we want to do is just leave this gap out right here on one or the other of the frog rails, sometimes both. We may want both frog rails to be powered from the same frog juicer. So if we're building up our own frog out of rail, it's easy to just not have a gap there. But however you can go about doing it, our goal is going to be to make the frog rail part of the frog, electrically part of the frog, so that as the polarity on the frog uh, it switches from the frog juicer, so the frog rail also changes polarity. Now you can see here when the points are aligned to the uh, tangent track, the power to the diverging route over here is now both, both rails are black. Both are connected to either the high or the low or the positive or the negative, but that effectively is killing the power to that track. So assuming that this is some sort of little stub siding, could be at an engine facility, could be any number of things, but a, a little dead end stub siding, you have effectively killed power to that track just by throwing the switch. So you can pull a locomotive in here, then align the switch back to the main and that locomotive is parked. It isn't gonna go anywhere. And this may be uh, an entire facility of some kind over here. And as long as your power is all being fed 
from the frog or frog juicer, the entire facility beyond that switch is going to lose power when you switch the, uh, the points over to the main. Now I mentioned earlier that uh, sometimes you might want to use this on a DCC railroad. This is the engine facility on our logging railroad, our current logging railroad. And I chose to put a selective switch here at the engine facility, which is at the far end of track. And by uh, engine facility, I mean this little single stall uh, engine shop here. But then it also has a little stub siding next to it where a locomotive can be parked outside of the engine shop. Now we run the logging railroad on both DCC and DC. I've just got to switch it to the control panel to switch it between the two systems. And the reason for that is all of our logging railroad uh, locomotives are Bachmann Spectrum, the large scale Bachmann Spectrum, and all of those locomotives have a built in circuit board that will short out a DCC railroad if you set that locomotive on the track. I think Bachmann has done that to protect their motors from DCC. So as soon as you set one of their Bachmann Spectrums that haven't been converted to DCC on a DCC railroad, the whole thing is going to short out. So when I'm running the railroad on DC, I can pull a locomotive into the shop here and as soon as I uh, close this switch, it kills power to the locomotive in the engine shop. And if the locomotive is a Bachmann Spectrum uh, parked in the engine shop, once I close that switch, I can now switch my railroad back over to DCC and that Bachmann Spectrum will not short out my entire DCC railroad. So you probably wouldn't ever use a selective control on a DCC railroad, but when you're operating both DCC and DC as I am here, you may have reason to put in a selectively controlled switch. And you may come up with some other reason on a DCC railroad to do this. It just depends. Now back when we had our uh, layout at MRS, sort of a club layout, MRS Hobby Shop. It had a rather extensive track plan. It was a really large railroad, O scale, and I had wired a lot of these switches for selective control just because we ran this on both uh, DCC and DC. Well, let, let me say I wired it for both DCC and DC, but we only ever ran it on DC as we never actually ever had any DCC locomotives. So here's the track plan for just the narrow gauge line on that railroad, the three foot gauge line. The little red lines crossing the track are breaks in the track, uh, isolated one rail uh, to create the block system. And we'll talk about that more when we talk about wiring for blocks. But everywhere you see a little red S next to a turnout, that means that that turnout is selectively controlled. So let's just take a look at this little facility over here. This is uh, cattle yards. We've got a little stub siding over here and it's selectively controlled. So when we're actually switching in there, if we're taking a locomotive in there to pick up a car, it has power. But when we realign to the main, that entire track over there loses power. So if we want to, we can park a locomotive in there. Now this is a little complicated, we're getting ahead of ourselves because we haven't talked about block wiring, but this entire facility over here is block 11 so that we can pull a train into this siding and have train meets. But the two switches inside the facility are selectively controlled so that uh, we kill power to these two stub sidings when we're not actively switching them. Therefore, if we want to, we can park a locomotive back in there and it will kill power to it. So we'll be looking at this track plan a bit more when we talk about cab controls. But for now, if you look around on this track plan and look for those little red S's, hopefully it will make sense as to why I chose to selectively control that bit of track and cut power to that siding whenever the switch was aligned to the main. But we're still working on a couple of projects at uh, Garage Mahal, but next Sunday we're actually going to be covering the train show, the Spanish Fork train show. And you don't want to miss that. 
So if you're not a sub uh, subscriber to the channel, please subscribe by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And Karen and I will see you here on Sunday. See you then. Bye-bye.